20 billion dollars. Let that just sink in a minute. That's an awful lot of money. But what does it mean? Well, that's how much money Adobe have spent to buy out Figma, the design and prototyping tool, something that millions of users around the world are using. Why? Because it's incredibly powerful, it's relatively simple to get started with, and most importantly, it's pretty much free to do almost anything you want. It's not a crippled version, and that's made it incredibly popular in the design community. Myself, I've been using it now for the last couple of months and absolutely fell in love with it. So I'm kind of bummed to hear that Adobe are buying it out. This means we don't really know what the future is. They might tell us one thing, but the reality is once that money's changed hands, we don't know what's going to happen. Today, I'm going to give you two different tools that are totally free and work in a very similar fashion to Figma. So transitioning over from one to the other is relatively simple and straightforward. So let's take a look at the first one. So off the bat, we're gonna check out Lunacy. Crazy name, admittedly, but it is very, very close to Figma. So if you are moving over, you should find the transition pretty painless. The nice thing is, this isn't a cloud-based platform. It's available for Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. So if you're a Linux user, you're not gonna be locked out like so many other tools do, where they only support Mac and Windows. So all you need to do is go ahead, download it, install it, and you are pretty much good to go. But what do you get in the package? Let's take a quick look at what we have and then we'll jump into the software itself and take a quite kind of whistle stop tour about the interface. So as you can see, if we take a look down underneath, there's a little video that's just over a minute long, which I would recommend checking out because it's kind of interesting. And there's some nice little features inside you that when you're creating mockups and prototypes, you do these things and they've integrated it directly into the software itself, which means it speeds up that side of things. It's a nice clean interface. You've got an image upscaler if you need to upscale images, a background remover built directly into it. So it saves you having to use a third party tool like Affinity Photo, Photoshop or something like that. You've got an avatar avatar generator, like I've just said, so you can quickly generate random avatars. You've got text generator, so you don't need to use a Laura Ibsen plugin. You can do that directly inside the tool itself. The other thing that's cool is this is coming from Icon 8. And Icon 8 have tons of icons, images, graphics, logos, tons and tons of different things. And Lots of that are directly integrated into the Lunacy platform. They're drag and drop simple, and then you can use any of the other tools you want to customize and get everything the way you want it to. You can see there's icons, illustrations, photos, and importantly, UI kits for common things like iOS, for the iPhone, for Windows, all those kinds of things all included directly inside it. And as you can see, it's a native app for all three platforms, comes in 18 different languages. So again, support for lots and lots of users around the world. And you can have up to a hundred teammates interacting with this. Pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so that's the waffle about the actual platform itself. Let's just jump into the software and have a quick rummage around to see what's there. Now, this is not an exhaustive tour. This is just me coming from Figma and looking at some alternatives and how they kind of feel at a first look. If you want more detailed tutorials, including things like Lunacy, let me know in the comment section below and I'll create them. So once you go ahead and log into Lunacy, you're going to see a very familiar type of interface to Figma. You've got a dark and a light mode, so that's always good to see. You can use whichever one you want. I prefer dark mode, especially when designing. If we look on the left-hand side, you can see we've got layers, components, styles, icons, photos, illustrations, and UI kits, and also shortcuts in the bottom. We've also got a floating toolbar with pretty much all the tools you'd expect to see. Again, if you're coming from a tool like Figma, this is all going to feel very familiar. And on the right hand side, you're going to get all the control options for whatever tool or tools you have selected or whatever item on the actual page or the actual canvas that you have selected. You also see we've got a play button at the top. So if you want to prototype things to interact with them, once you set that up, you can do that inside Lunacy. So very similar to what you can do in Figma. You see we've got a color palette down the right hand side. We can export our project. There's all types of options inside here. If we select something on the page itself, you can see this now gives us information about that and all the controls on the right hand side are the things we can do. So like remove background, you can see we can set appearance and then we can create layer styles and you can create styles, you can create components. All the things you're used to doing in most of the prototyping tools are going to be available inside you, including grids, drop shadows, effects and things like that. It's all integrated into it and very, very, very similar in the way you work to using Figma. So transitioning over, 
should be pretty simple. So let's take a quick look at something. Let's say, let's just get rid of this completely. Let's go ahead and create something so we can see how some of these tools work. If we come over and choose our rounded corner rectangle, you can see we can come down, we get the interactive guides, which is something that I absolutely love from using tools like Figma, also like Affinity Designer and those kinds of things. It just makes designing so quick and easy. Your keyboard modifiers are in place, so we're going to let go on there. You can see if we come up, we've got the option for our corner radius, so we can come in, choose our corner radius. We'll set that on there. You can see there's our corner radius. We can come over to our fills. We can choose that. We've got global colors. We can change that to document colors if we want to. You can see we've got gradients, radial gradients, angular gradients, transparency. We can check any color we want. We can create color variables. We can use hexadecimal, RGB, HSB, and HSL. HSL is great if you want to adjust the lightness values or the hue values of a base color, great when you want to create sort of like transitionary colors in between various different components. We leave that as hexadecimal. So I'll go ahead now and just choose one of the colors. For this example, let's just choose this blue and you can see that now applies it. If we go to the left hand side, go into our illustrations, you can see inside there, if I just close this down, there's an abundance of different types of illustrations. You want hands that are fun and wild, you can do that and you can see they're all available inside you. All these are coming from Icon 8, so they're great quality images. Let's go ahead and grab this 3D flame, which is what I've been using inside here. And if we scroll through, you can see we've got a ton of awesome looking icons, images, illustrations, and so on. So let's grab something that I think looks cool. Let's grab that one. We'll drop that on there. We'll resize it, position it where we want. There we go, pretty cool. All the interactive guides, like I say, are already there. If you want your alignment options, you can group select different items. Like we we'll grab these two, and we'll just make sure they're perfectly aligned. Job done. So you can see the design aspect is incredibly simple. We've also got things like photos inside you. So if you want to search for something, let's just say shopping. We now get a ton of images we can drag into our design. Let's just drag something in a second. Let's grab this one and drop that inside our design. Once we select that, you can see you've got the option to remove background. We'll click on that. That's going to go ahead and use the AI, which is the key of everything these days. And there we go. We've got a pretty solid looking background removal on that image. And now we can do whatever we want with it. We can scale it. We can do whatever. So pretty cool. So you can see just getting started with this, all the kind of key tools that you want inside you. If you want to come in and create your own custom styles, you can create styles, you can create typography styles, you want to create components. So for example, we might want to create a component out of this little group. We can right click and we can see inside there, we've got create component. And there we go. There's our component. We can double click and we can rename that when we want. So we'll just call that component blue, for example. And then if we want to, we can just simply drag that onto our design. And there we go. We've now got another instance of that component. Pretty cool. Really simple. So there's an abundance of options inside you. You want grids and guides. You can do all that. You want to create your own custom uh, sort of layers. You can see I've got a iPhone 13 Pro Max. That's what I'm using at the moment, but I can create any other ones that I want. So I can create all different kinds of sizes. So I would recommend checking out Lunacy. I think it's really, really good alternative that is completely free, has some great integrated options, and is very quick and easy to transition from Figma. Or if you just start in fresh and new, I think the learning curve is also relatively slight on this one as well. But like I say, if you'd like me to create some content on how to use this to prototype designs, let me know in the comment section down below. Now, next on the list is Penpot. Now, I've never heard of this one until today, and a lot of people are jumping on board this one. So what you're basically getting is an online prototyping platform, pretty much the same as what we have with a tool like Figma or Sketch, those kinds of tools. So this isn't a standalone product. This is only going to be inside the cloud. You can see we've got cross domain teams, we've got open standards, multi-platform, and it's open source, which is always great to see. You've got components in the same ways we've seen when we're working with Figma and Lunacy, which are great ways of being able to create something, save it as a component, then you just drag that over onto your design and you can make changes if you want to, or just use it exactly as it is. You can prototype so you can have interaction between the various different parts. So if you're designing for a mobile app or you're designing for a website and you want to create some interactivity, you can do that with this in exactly the same way as you can do with Figma and Lunacy. If we come down, you can see we've got working with teams is an integral part of this. 
and we've got conversations going on. So if you are working as part of a collaborative team, you can leave comments and feedback, see who's left it, feedback on that. You know, all of that is built into this, which I think is pretty cool if you are part of a team. Libraries and templates, all those kinds of things are included. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at PenPot in action and see how it differs, but also how it's very similar to the tools like Lunacy and Figma. So once you've signed up and you've opened up your first document, you'll see things do look very similar, but also slightly different. You can see on the left-hand side, we have a series of different options. We've got your typical sort of move tool. You can create your own custom boards. You can click, we can drag out and create a board any way we want. So let's just go ahead and do that. You can do things like set the background on there. You can set your sizing. You can size presets. You can see inside here we've got an abundance of presets. So you may want to use something like a Microsoft Surface Pro or the web. You're working for 1920 by 1080, for example. You can click and it'll adjust that sizing for you. If we take a look on the right-hand side, you can see you've got a lot of the same kinds of options. So you've got your sizing. You've got your option for layers, fill color, strokes, shadows, your grid. So if you want to put a grid on, you can open this up and create create either rows, columns, square, whatever you kind of want. If you drop this down, you can see we can set this to be columns. And then if we click these little three dots, this opens up additional options. So it's a nice, simple, clean interface. It doesn't necessarily feel quite as polished as Figma or Lunacy, but that's just little things that, you know, they don't impact the way that you work. All the options that you want pretty much are there. You take a look at the left hand side, you've got your layers and your assets and assets are broken down into various different things. We've got components, we've got graphics, colors and typographies. So again, you can create your own custom library items and then you can use those in your designs, speeds up the whole design process where you're using the same typography, same colors, same components, those kinds of things. You've got your options there for the different shapes. You can see we've got rectangles, we've got ellipses, we've got text, you've got images. You've got the option for curves, you've got the pen or path tool, and you've got the comments option that allows you to interact with the team that you have set up. If you come back to your layers, inside there you can see we've got any of our pages. So if you're coming from something like InDesign, this kind of feels semi-familiar with that. Inside your pages then you can see you've got your different artboards, and then inside your artboards you've got the various different pieces that make up the design that you're working on. As you can see, we've got some text, we've got some buttons, we've got an image, and so on. So all the things you kind of used to are inside you. You can also go ahead into the prototyping option and inside there you can start to create your prototype. So when you've designed things and you want to have that interaction and show people how that interaction works, the prototyping aspect comes in very, very handy. So again, this is a kind of a whistle stop tour of just some of the features that are available inside you. Again, if you want me to cover this tool in a little bit more detail, let me know in the comments section below and I'll create some content around it. But these are two really solid options. You may want to check out the cost you zero money, but also whether you use them now or whether you may potentially use them in the future, if Figma does change, then at least you've got some tools in the back pocket that are not gonna cost you any money. You can get up to speed relatively quickly coming from Figma and well, like I say, you don't have to spend any money at all. But if you've got any other tools that you would recommend, let me know in the comments section because I would love to know what tools you are using if you're looking for alternatives for Figma or you've already been using those alternatives for a period of time. Let me know, drop some links in there and let me know so I can check them out. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts and until next time, take care.